Hello everyone in this video we are going to discuss about a gynecology topic called adenomyosis definition adenomyosis is a condition where there is ingrowth of the endometrium both the glandular and stromal components directly into the myometrium so guys they're saying here there is a direct ingrowth of both the glands and the stromal components of the endometrium into the myometrium you can see the endometrium lining here the glands and the stromal components of the endometrium this is the myometrium what is happening the glands and the stromal components of the endometrium it is directly entering into the myometrium so when they are directly entering from here direct entry here direct entry when they are directly entering from the endometrium into the myometrium it is known as adenomyosis next the causes the causes of such ingrowth is not known so we do not know the exact for cause for the growth of the endometrium into the myometrium but it might be related to repeated childbirths so women who undergo repeated childbirths there might be a rupture of the endometrium during delivery this rupture can lead to the endometrial tissue to grow into the myometrial tissue vigorous curettage so vigorous curettage curettage is a medical procedure which is done after abortion or miscarriage where there is a scooping and scraping of the endometrium during the scooping and scraping there might be a trauma or a rupture to the endometrium this can lead the endometrial tissue to get implanted into the myometrium or excess of estrogenic effect so whenever there is an hyper estrogenic state there that can also lead to the endometrial tissue to grow into the myometrium pelvic endometriosis coexists in about 40% so a condition known as endometriosis which we have already dealt in the part 1 of this uh, session called endometriosis and adenomyosis endo again i'm going to tell you the definition here endometriosis is a condition where the glands and the stromal components of the endometrium are situated outside the uterus here it is situated in the pelvis so the pelvic endometriosis it is coexisting in about 40% coexisting in the sense both the adenomyosis and endometriosis is found together in 40% of the patients hope the causes are clear one it might be because of repeated childbirths second vigorous curettage third hyperestrogenic state clinical features in about 1/3 it remains asymptomatic being discovered on histological examination so in about 1/3 of the patients there is no symptoms found adenomyosis it is asymptomatic in 1/3 of the patients they are discovered during the histological examination now let us look into the patient profile of adenomyosis the patients are usually paris with the age usually above 40 years paris women who have repeated uh, pregnancies who have given birth to many number of children so usually paris women the age will be above 40 years the symptoms are menorrhagia menorrhagia is found in 70% of the patients suffering with adenomyosis menorrhagia is a abnormal uterine bleeding where there is excess bleeding that could be more than 80 ml or it is prolonged for more than 7 days so people suffering with uh, adenomyosis they will have menorrhagia the excessive bleeding is due to the increased uterine cavity what happens in adenomyosis the uterine cavity is going to be increased it is going to be large bulky bubbly because the endometrial tissue is being deposited in the myometrium this is increasing the uterine cavity associated endometrial hyperplasia there is associated endometrial hyperplasia then inadequate uterine contraction so guys the menorrhagia is because of increased uterine cavity you see menorrhagia because of increased uterine cavity associated endometrial hyperplasia 
and inadequate uterine contraction during the normal menstruation what happens you see here during the normal menstruation there is anti grade propagation of the subendometrial contractions from the fundus to the cervix so they are saying during the normal contractions what happens from the fundus of the uterus the blood is going to shed in from the fundus there is anti grade when it is coming this downwards it is anti grade propagation of subendometrial contractions from the fundus to the cervix you can see to the cervix it comes whereas in adenomyosis there is distortion there is distortion of junctional zone you see the junctional zone that is subendometrial myometrium that is known as junctional zone what happens here there is distortion that is twisting or there is an abnormality of the junctional zone so the myometrial contractions are abnormal and inadequate guys what's happening here since the junctional zone is responsible for the normal contractions of the uterus that is anti grade contractions from the fundus to the cervix since it is responsible the junctional zone is responsible for the normal contractions it is being affected in adenomyosis so there is abnormal and inadequate contractions which is resulting in menorrhagia what's happening in menorrhagia three things endometrial hyperplasia inadequate uterine contraction and there is increased uterine cavity when the uterine cavity is going to be increased because of the deposition of endometrium in the myometrium then there is endometrial hyperplasia increase in the number of cells of the um, endometrium then there is inadequate uterine contraction we understood why there is inadequate uterine contraction it is because the junctional zone is damaged which is responsible for the uterine contraction it is distorted here resulting in abnormal and inadequate contractions dysmenorrhea progressively increased colicky pain during the period is due to the retrograde pattern of uterine contractions so dysmenorrhea also known as painful menstruation what happens here there is retrograde pattern of uterine contractions normally it is from the fundus to the cervix who is responsible here the junctional zone will be there the junctional zone will be responsible for the normal anti grade pattern of contraction whereas in adenomyosis there is retrograde retrograde is a reversed pattern the contractions are abnormally reversed it also depends on the number and depth of endometriotic foci in the myometrium it also depends upon the you can see the endometriotic foci which is in the myometrium it is also depending upon the endometriotic foci these are the endometriotic foci which is situated in the myometrium the pain is also depending upon these foci when the depth of the penetration is more than 80% so when the depth of the penetration of the foci is more than 80% of the myometrium then the pain is severe other causes of pain are local tissue edema the other causes will be local tissue edema and prostaglandins so guys hope dysmenorrhea is clear why do people have dysmenorrhea one there is retrograde pattern of uterine contraction second it also depends upon the extent the how deeper the uterine uh, adenomyotic foci is present and then if it is more than 80% of the myometrium then the pain is going to be very severe the other causes could be the tissue edema that is swelling and prostaglandins dyspareunia or frequency of urination dyspareunia is painful sexual intercourse it is also due to the enlarged and tender uterus you see here the enlarged uterus is putting this enlarged uterus is putting a pressure on the urinary bladder this is bladder this is the uterus this is rectum what's happening here this enlarged uterus is putting a pressure on the urinary bladder resulting in the increased frequency of urination dyspareunia dyspareunia also the uh, cervix and the vagina is also going to be affected resulting in painful sexual intercourse
In fertility, women with adenomyosis have a higher incidence of infertility and miscarriage. You see, the women who are suffering with adenomyosis, they have increased incidence of infertility. The reasons for infertility are abnormal function of the subendometrial myometrium. We know the subendometrial myometrium is also known as junctional zone. Since the function of this junctional zone here, uh, the junctional zone of the myometrium is going to be affected. Subendometrial myometrium, also known as junctional zone, there is an abnormal function. Retrograde myometrial contractions. We have already discussed these two points. Instead, from the fundus to the cervix, there is a reversed uh, uh, contractions. That is retrograde myometrial contractions. Interference in the sperm transport and blastocyst implantation. Since the uterus is enlarged, boggy, tender, so the sperm transport cannot happen properly. The, since the endometrium is uh, hyperplaced, smooth muscles are hyperplaced, the endometriotic, it is the tissues of the endometrium, they are going to become resistant to the implantation. So if this is a blastocyst, if it wants to get uh, implanted here, there is a smooth muscle hyperplasia, irritation. So this is the uterus. This is the myometrium. So the blastocyst wants to get lined in the endometrium. So it becomes resistant and there is no blastocyst implantation. Abnormal endometrial immune response and nitric oxide level. So infertility is also because of abnormal uterine immune response and nitric oxide level. The signs Abdominal examination reveals a hypogastric mass arising out of the pelvis and occupying the midline. You can see the abdominal examination. There is a hypogastric mass. This mass is arising out of the pelvis and it is occupying the midline. The size of the hypogastric mass does not exceed 14 weeks of the pregnant uterus. Though, so the size does not exceed the 14 weeks of pregnant uterus. So from the abdominal examination, we learned that there is a hypogastric mass and it is less than 14 weeks of the pregnant uterus, the size. The pelvic examination, when you do the pelvic examination, it is going to reveal a uniform enlargement of the uterus. The findings, however, may be altered due to the associated fibroid or pelvic endometriosis. So when you do the pelvic examination, you find the enlargement of uterus, but the, it cannot clearly give you a distinction that this is adenomyosis because adenomyosis could also be associated with a fibroid or pelvic endometriosis. So you, you might be confused whether it is a fibroid or a pelvic endometriosis. But to differentiate a fibroid from the adenomyosis with the clinical presentation, the women will have dysmenorrhea that is of congestive type only in adenomyosis, whereas in fibroid, there will be no painful menstruation. Ultrasound and color droplet TVS characteristics are the myometrium normally has three distinct zones of different echogenicity. Guys, here they are speaking about the echogenicity of the myometrium. Echogenicity is the ability to bounce of an echo. The echo, for an echo the, which has an ability to bounce, then it is known as echogenicity. That is actually the return of the signal in ultrasound examination. The inner layer of the myometrium is hypoechoic, relative to the middle and the outer layer. This subendometrial halo is a characteristic in adenomyosis. So, when there is different types of echogenicity, when there is heterogeneous echocity, different types, then it is no, it is a characteristic of adenomyosis. You can see the inner layer here is hypoechoic and relative to the middle and outer layer, and the subendometrial halo is a characteristic in adenomyosis. The other features of adenomyosis are during the ultrasound and color droplet, the other features you see are heterogeneous echogenicity. Heterogeneous echogenicity means uh, when there is uh, the deposition of the endometrial tissue into the myometrium, it results in heterogeneity of the myometrium. Heterogeneous, echo, heterogeneous echogenicity is found 
hypoechoic myometrium with a multiple small cyst in the myometrium honeycomb appearance so you see in the picture here there is hypoechoic myometrium with a multiple small cyst those in the red color there are small cyst and you can see the black dots they are giving the myometrium a honeycomb appearance increased vascularity within the myometrium there is also going to be increased vascularity since the uh, spiral arteries are found in the myometrium there is increased vascularity and as well the endometrial tissues are deposited so they have been uh, supplied with the blood vessels the spiral arteries are going to supply even the adenomyosis which undergrowths which undergoes growth during the uh, cyclic hormones there is an increased vascularity within the endometrium so from the ultrasound and color droplet we found there is heterogeneous echogenicity the inner layer is hypoechoic relative to the middle and outer layer this subendometrial halo is a characteristic in adenomyosis the other features what we saw was main important there was heterogeneous echogenicity the hypoechoic myometrium why was it hypoechoic it was because the multiple cyst were found in the myometrium that is giving it a honeycomb appearance and the, as well there was an increased vascularity within the myometrium magnetic resonance imaging mri it is more specific to the diagnosis so with this if you fail to diagnose with the ultrasound then we ask the patient to get the mri done it is more specific to the diagnosis low signal intensity if the junctional zone is less than 8 mm it excludes the disease whereas the junctional zone which is greater than 12 mm is suggestive of adenomyosis so we know where the junctional zone lies uh, we already read it in the previous slide here the junctional zone when the junctional zone is more than 12 mm then it is diagnosis of adenomyosis thank you with this we come to an end of uh, the discussion of endometriosis and adenomyosis chapter hope everything is clear if you have any doubts put it in the comment section i would try to solve them if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe